Hey there, folks. Welcome back for day 27 of the 30 Days of Banjo. And what you just heard is the next and final tune that we're going to be learning, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? This is a great tune and a really common one, one you're definitely going to want to know. And we're going to learn it slightly differently than what we've done in the past. Usually, we've looked at some new techniques and then incorporated it into a song. But that's not always how you're going to learn things. Sometimes someone's just going to show you how to play something, or you're just going to find some tablature, or you're going to find a lesson, and it's just going to say, this is how you play it. So now we need to go over a little bit of how you can actually digest some of this material on your own. So over the next four days, I'm going to walk you through the process of looking at this material and listening to it and reading it and then learning it. And to me, the best way to do this is just look at different pieces of it and focus on them one at a time so that we can digest probably what we can actually handle. So next four days, we're going to go four measures at a time. Now, most of what we have here is stuff we've already seen, just in a slightly different context. We're going to go four measures at a time, but during this lesson, let's just go one measure at a time. So let's just look at this first measure. First things first, we open with these first two notes. Nothing crazy about that. But then we have this first measure that includes a slide that we haven't seen before. Let's break this down into how I'm actually looking at this. We've just got that first individual note, G, right, on the third string. Great. Then we've got this slide. But I'm thinking about this slide as being part of two forward rolls. Notice how after that first note on the third string, we've got thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle. We just include that slide. Thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle. It doesn't happen necessarily on those strings, but that's how I'm thinking about it at first. Then you can correct to have the right strings in there. If you can see these little roll patterns, then you can actually organize this material a little easier in your head. It might be easier to keep track of, so you don't necessarily have to stare at the tab all the time. Then we have the second measure, which has this four note forward roll pattern we've seen a couple times. Then we have a pattern that we haven't actually seen before, which isn't anything in particular, it just happens to be how this tune is played in this instance. It's not the only way this tune is played, it's just this arrangement happens to have this pattern. But there isn't really a name for this pattern, so you just kind of have to get used to it. So the second half of this second measure sounds like this. Not too crazy. Index finger on the second string, middle finger on the first string. Then we're going to do a pull off. This time we're not pulling off to an open string. We're pulling off from our middle finger to our index finger. Three to two. And then we're playing our open first string. So. So that whole pattern right there, that whole measure in fact. First note of the next measure. So let's play those first two measures of this section. And that's it. Even though we're gonna go through the next two measures in this lesson, I would still just focus on the part that you can handle. If that's just those two measures so far, then great, that's all you should do. Once that's comfortable, we can move on. This next measure has material we've definitely already seen before. It's just a single note and a pinch followed by one of our slide licks that we've seen before. So all together, that's... Great, no problem. Then we've got another pattern that's not quite what we've seen before, but actually these two measures in context kind of make sense. So if we look at just that last measure of this first line, then we end up with index middle, then this forward roll, then kind of this backward roll with a pull off in there also. So that can be a little bit confusing. It doesn't necessarily look like something that we're totally used to. But what if we look at those two measures in context? These are the last two measures of that first line. We're doing our single note in a pinch first. No big deal. When we do this slide, that's a forward roll. We play our thumb. Across the bar line, you'll notice thumb, index, middle. That's another forward roll. Then another forward roll. So if we ignore the bar line and we don't think about it too much like that, we can look at that starting from that slide. Then we just have a backward roll. 
with our pull-off. I know that can be a lot to digest right now, but you can look at these things a lot of different ways. If you play it really, really slowly, sometimes it's actually harder to hear what it's supposed to be. So listen to this. This is a slightly faster version of those second two measures. So actually, you can kind of hear that, that that makes a little bit more sense, I think. But in order to actually play it, you have to go back down to the super slow speed and do it that way. So that's the first four measures. That's already a lot of material. This is kind of how this stuff works, is sometimes you'll find lessons where they'll explain every little thing to you, and that's great. You need that sometimes. But if you want to get better, you have to find a way to explain it to yourself. So the way that I just explained it to you is how I explain these things to myself, which is that I look for patterns that I already recognize, and if I don't recognize one, then I try to make a mental note of it as something that maybe I'll recognize again in the future. So we're going to do this for the next three days with the other 12 measures of this tune. But if you can practice just these first four measures, that's all you need to practice. Don't worry about the backup. Don't worry about the other tunes. You can get back to that in four more days. But for now, let's focus just on this. Just play these four measures over and over again. By the way, the featured banjo player in this lesson is Janet Beasley, who's both a great banjo player and songwriter, kind of a rare combination. So I hope you enjoy the playlist in the description, which includes many songs that she's written. Also, feel free to subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's a huge thing that you can do to help me make more of these lessons. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow for day 28 of the 30 Days of Banjo. Bye.